Good morning, church family. So uh, some of you know me as the person that works in the children's ministry. I'm Iris. Um, I also uh, sing on the worship team, haven't in a little while um, because of work schedule and things like that. But I just wanted to make sure I take a moment to introduce myself if you haven't seen me before. Um, So Pastor Donnie trusted me to share the word today. So number one, I'd like to start by saying thank you, Pastor Donnie, for trusting me. So, you know, I'm not too crazy to put me up here, and I appreciate that. (laughs) Um, So, and then for, and I just kind of wanted to to just share that what Brian said was, we could go home. (laughs) Um, It's just, and I did not share with the team, the worship team, or I didn't share with people what I was preaching. It was like a joke. They're like, what are you? I'm like, you'll find out Sunday. Um, But I just kept praying about it. And I just wanted it to be God's God's touch, not in any way Iris influenced. Um, So to, to have, to have Brian, who does have that prophetic bend, you know, just feel this word. It's so in line with what God's doing, right? God is speaking through him. And I just want to encourage you that even many times as seasoned Christians, when we hear it's exactly what Brian was saying, we're so comfortable. When we hear God speak, many times we're like, oh, he's talking to the other person. <laughs> I know this, you know? And we miss the precious words of our God. We miss the direction that he's sending us in. And that in itself causes us to go in the wrong place. So I just, I'm so grateful that God in his infinite wisdom uh, would have Pastor Brian kind of tee that up, you know, because I'm like, oh, that's so good. (laughs) Um, But today I wanted to share about intimacy, to know and be known by God. Um, because there's a difference between knowing of someone and knowing someone. So I wanted to kind of go into what that looks like. Um, To start us off, I wanted to go through um, Matthew 7. um, And we'll start at verse 7. And I'll just read it through. And just for context, you know, Jesus is speaking. So this is from the Lord. This is not someone's interpretation. Well, it's Matthew's taking notes and he's pretty, I like Matthew, his style in the way. And I know pastor Donnie mentioned it. He's like the, you know, the son of this, the son of that. He seems to be someone who's really detailed when he does present the information. He wants to give context. He goes into things, um, in a very clear way. So I think it's really interesting, but, um, so starting at Matthew seven, Jesus is speaking. Okay. I'm stressing, it's Jesus, it's the Lord. Um, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look in the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? I can imagine him just like, why? You know, (laughs) it's like you're talking to your kids like, Really? (laughs) Um, How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample under their feet and and turn and tear you to pieces. There's a lot there, but I'm not going to stop there because I could go, I could get lost. Um, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, you, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in anything you do, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Um, I'm going to skip through a little bit. Um, 
um, he kind of, Jesus talks about, you know, the narrow gate. He talks about watching out for false prophets. He talks about judging a tree by its fruit. And then going down to verse 21, um, this is the part that rocks me. Not everyone who will say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, we drive out demons. And in your name, we perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. I know. Someone said, that's so scary. So, it's a lot to unpack, but that's where we're, he, that's where we're landing today. Because some people, we, we, we'll say we, we read the scripture and a lot of times we think, oh, Jesus is speaking to the unsaved or, oh, Jesus is speaking to that time. But he's talking about when we're going before God, many, he doesn't say some, he says many will come before me. The, many of people that, that, that believe, they say, Lord, Lord. I'll look at you in the eye and I'll say, I never knew you. So in this room, there, there's not some, many of us that are in this room right now. If God came right now, that could be our story. We could say, Lord, Lord, I was saved for 30 years. I've been in the worship. I could list 30 ministries me and my husband have been in. Gave our lives, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it could be a long list. And I'm sure, you know, there are people here that have been ministering for 50 years and it could be, and God will say, I've ne I never knew you. Who are you? You're evil. And that's it. I struggled with this because when I've shared before, it's always been like, you know, I'm not a pastor. Um, so it's like more you know, oh, it's fun. It's what I want to share. But this was like, it was hard. You know, I'm like, oh, this is a hard one, right? Um, because it is a scary topic. And when we're scared of things, we try to avoid it. So let's, uh, let's dive a little deeper. Jesus says many, not a few. We know that if God decided to return this moment, we could be in that place. Um, so I just want to ask you, while we're going through this together, that we would just... For those of you who really love to pray, just pray through this time together. Because what, what Pastor Brian said about being too comfortable, when we're in church a long time, we do get too comfortable. And we do start to think these things don't apply to us. Um, but they do. And so we're going to kind of dive into that a little bit. So if you're a praying warrior, pray through this with me. And for everyone that's in here, let's just kind of look at this together and dive deep together, okay? Um, so this scripture is hard for us to swallow, but we, we all need to know, we all know the difference between knowing someone and knowing of someone. Okay. So we know of celebrities, right? You may study that celebrity. You may have a poster up. You may, or, you know, you may know them so well because you feel connected to their story. Um, so you learn their habits, but we don't know them. Can we agree to that? Okay. Um, they certainly do not know us. Okay. So if I walk up and I'm like, <laughs> Liam Neeson's like standing there and I'm like, he's pretty cool. I'm pretty, um, you know, he's a cool guy. Right. Um, and if he's standing there and I'm like, Liam, yeah, I try to hug him. That's weird because I know of him, but I don't know him. And he certainly doesn't know me. And he may look at me and say, I don't know you. We understand that in context of celebrities, but it's the same thing. Okay. It's the same thing if we know of God, but we don't know God. Right. Um, we can, and it's like, how can this happen? Like, it's hard to, again, it's hard to think it could be us, but let's dig deep. We can read the Bible as a historical reference. We could memorize the concepts yet denied Jesus and lacked salvation. Just as the Pharisees knew the law, but did not recognize the Lord, 
the creator of the law when he was in their presence. It is not a new concept. So they knew, they knew that he was coming. They knew he was like, the things were unfolding. He had a, he, he knew things he shouldn't know. And they're just like, well, let's just give him a test. Who are you? They didn't know the Lord. They knew the law. Sometimes we fall into that. We have been in church for a long time. We get familiar with the idea of someone versus knowing them intimately. Um, for, uh, to share how the personal side of it for me, I have a, um, I'm sharing this respectfully because it's, it's hard to, I, I believe in respecting those around us and those who are within our story. Um, and none of us are perfect. So we all try, most of us try our best, right? Um, so bear with me cause I'm, this is the part I'm struggling with. So I'll start by saying I was, uh, born to two teen parents where they weren't married. Um, uh, my mother was raised in the church. My father was not. To give context, my father was number eight of 10 children. Very poor. His father died when he was 12. He was raised on the streets. The kind of lifestyle he had, and it was just poverty, depression, all of that. He didn't know how to hold a pencil when he went to school. He didn't know what his name, his full name was. They thought he was someone that needed additional support when he started kindergarten because he didn't know what to do with paper, pencil. Um, and when they called his name in English, my, we're Puerto Rican, he didn't recognize his name because his mom called him, just, but she'd say, Richie, Richie. And his name is Richard. <laughs> so, so when he, they, they asked him, is your name this? Is your name that? And he couldn't answer it. They were like, well, he's not. He doesn't belong in a classroom for, you know, and it sounds, it's like, it's, it's so crazy. And he tells the story like it's funny. And it's like, we're like, it's not funny. <laughs> you know, I'm like, that is so sad. <laughs> um, but that's the kind of life he had. He had a rough life, you know. Um, he tells a story of like the first time he realized he was physically dirty was he went to a friend's house that he met at school. And his, the, the family said, take your shoes off. And he took his shoes off and he stepped on the carpet and he realized how dirty he was because the carpet was so clean, you know? So my father had a rough upbringing. My mother was raised in the church in a very religious church, right? Um, she was raised, her father was a violent alcoholic. Um, she was also poor. Um, her mother was a Bible believing Christian. But my, um, my mom is number two of five, and my, her father, after very of years of you know, being raised by him, uh, it was a horrible uh, upbringing. All the children um, would attest to the same thing. Um, he left his wife and five small ch young children without, you know, to, to go with one of his many lovers. So my mother, her that wrecks somebody down, down to your core when you've already experienced that abuse. And then also that was her concept of a father. Right. Um, so my parents got, my parents got together, they were teenagers and then here comes a child. So I wanted to kind of share that perspective before going into my experience as their child. Okay. Um, so growing up, my dad, he wasn't saved, but he got saved. He got saved. He wanted, right, praise God. He wanted to do the right thing. He just didn't have a reference point, right? So he, you know, in the Bronx, very poor. He's taking care of his girlfriend and child. And then they decide they're going to get married, okay? He starts going to church. And he, like, deep dive, he wanted to memorize the Bible. Like, he was like, this man, he reads like no one I've ever, like he, my husband's like, yes. Like, and he'll, he has a book for everything, <laughs> which is also incredible because he was not someone that had the opportunity to have the education that many of us have, but he's one of the first people, even with my master's degree, I will call my dad before I call doctors that I work with about 
things that I'm struggling with or things I want to run through. He's a very intelligent man. Um, but growing up, it was hard. You know, there was, they're human. Can you imagine? They're human. Um, they also didn't have reference points of a father. My dad worked a lot cause he wanted us, he wanted me to have what, what I needed. And then they ended up having four children. Uh, and, uh, it was, it was, a. my mom had, um, some, uh, depression and mental health concerns. So growing up with the household, I had, I adored my mother. My mother was like, we grew up together, if that makes sense. So my mother's perspective of men was very negative. She could never trust that my father was going to come home. So my experience growing up with my mother was if he didn't come in the door at the same time she thought he should, she would be like, this is what he's doing. This is why. And so the perspective of my father was that he was running around. I just, there was no chance for me to establish that relationship with him. As the oldest daughter, I worshiped my mother and we grew up together. We were, she was young. I became her buddy. Even at 10, I remember, you know, conversations that were very uh, mature. Um, so that was, that was my life and that's fine. God is good. There's been, you know, I, I don't have any issues with my, I love my parents. When I was, uh, but I didn't have a good relationship with my dad. I didn't see him in a good way, you know, because I had these things in my mind and it also impacted my marriage, you know, how I saw men, you know, it's like I inherited that fear of just, you're going to leave or, you know, whatever. Um, but God's good. We are, we, I was raised in the church. There's so much growth that I saw my parents go through that. It was incredible to see. Why am I sharing this? When I was 27, something happened in my life that rocked my world. Okay. In that time, I, I needed my parents and my father was just incredible, you know, and I, and I started to get more open to who he was as a dad, as a person. I couldn't just, I just, I just kind of said, you know what? He's Christian. I have to stop thinking about, he was young and I just dismissed what I thought I knew and became close with my father. And that was great. About two years later, something came out. The truth came out, right? About my parents' beginning. And it was the opposite of what my mother had presented. To the point where it, the information that came out had me questioning my own identity. But... That truth, though painful, helped me know my father. That truth helped me see and look back on the journey that I had. And, you know, that beginning, the choice that he made. And I, and I didn't talk to him about it for a few years because it was a lot. Um, I didn't talk to anybody, but like my husband and I think one of one, maybe one of my sisters or something, I couldn't even get my brain around it. Um, but the truth of my father and as a 17 year old, the bottom line is he chose my mother and he chose me. He even left his family because they didn't agree with his decision, but he committed himself to this young woman and, and this child and he never left us. So that suddenly I went from knowing of my father, having no interest in really getting to know him to knowing my father in a very true way. And my heart opened up to him and I made the, I made efforts to get to know him, but I didn't tell him why until a few years later. And it was, my mom was very sick. Um, she had about a 10, a little over 10 years, uh, journey with, uh, with cancer and passed away at 54 years old. And I got, um, my dad was by her side. Um, and about three years before she passed, he was struggling with guilt about like, I I wish I would have done things differently. I wish I would have taken her out to see the world. I wish I would have known that we were going to have a short life together. And I just shared with him, you know, dad, you cannot entertain guilt or regret. Like you are awesome. And I just shared with him that I knew. 
And he, it was heavy for him. He said, I, I can't believe we're having this conversation. Anyways, all that to say, I got to know my dad in a different way because the truth came out and I accepted that truth and I, made, I did some work. Um, so as I go through and finish up this piece, I just wanted you to have that kind of in your mind that even, even someone that you see every day, it doesn't mean you know them. Okay. And there, how many times do we, out of someone's pain, out of someone's guilt or fear, they may say things about God, about the church, about, you know, while you're going through something and we may even think, you know, God, what kind of God are you, you know, that allows a child to die in their mother's arms, you know, or someone in their pain starts bringing negativity to your heart and it can skew our vision of who God is. So we have to know God for ourselves beyond just coming to church. Um, so with that, <laughs> um, when we're looking at God, I just, you know, looking at me and my father, you know, intimacy is, is clo that closeness. Um, there are four types of intimacy. There's emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical. And Jesus kind of, Jesus is a great example of kind of how you could walk with someone and not know them. Uh, we're saying, you know, look at Peter and Judas are good examples. They both walked with the Lord. And Jesus kind of, he, he goes into that where he says, who do they say that I am? And he says, who do you say that I am? And that's when Peter says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus is saying, okay, do you know me? Do you know who I am? Right? I'm with you. You've seen what I've done, but do you know me? And he says to Peter, you know, this has been revealed to you by God in heaven. So he's acknowledging that revelation had come to Peter. Judas, who was also someone who had walked through and seen incredible miracles and served the Lord, did not see Jesus as the Lord. He was certainly not Judas's Lord. Maybe he saw him as an opportunity. He may have seen him as, uh, who knows, I can't say. But that's also like an example that the Lord allows us to look at and say, okay, you could be with someone and not know him. We could be in church walking beside the Lord and never know him, right? Um, so I wanted to kind of go through this because there was a time, you know, like we all know the names of God, you know, and it's like some, when I, growing up, I thought like those were his names, like Spanish people, we have lots of names. So you can have like, four names, you could have five, and then you'll have a nickname on top of that. So, so I'm like, okay, Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, you know, you start just, I'm like, these are lots of names he likes to be called. You know, I just thought like those were just his names. Um, but in case you don't, um, have that reference point, you know, God, God calls himself El Shaddai, God Almighty. We see that in Genesis 17.1, and it's not going to come up because I wanted to just reference it. Um, and that was when he came to Abram, uh, when he was 99 years old. It says, the Lord appeared to him, I am El Shaddai. So God calls himself that, okay? God calls himself the good shepherd. The Lord calls himself the good shepherd. The Lord calls himself the physician. Um, one of the earliest, uh, oh, actually the earliest place in scripture where God gives us his name is when Jesus is actually like, who are you? Like, I mean, sorry, Moses is like, okay, God, what do I tell people? Like when I do this stuff for you, who do I say sent me? Because this is a lot, like you want me to do a lot. And I just want to know who am I saying like sent me? Because back then there was a lot of gods and they all had names too. So he's like, I, he, I feel this, exp I know that you're God. Or maybe he even in his mind at that point knew he was a God, right? I know you're a God. Which one are you? Okay. But the earliest place in scripture where God gives us his name, he's like, <laughs> it's my favorite answer in the world. I am who I am. <laughs> Okay, so when people say, what God are you serving? I say, I'm serving 
the God who is who he is? Or is, am I saying like, I, is your name I am? Like, am I, is it I am who I am on like one word? No, no. I am who I am. I am what I am. I am everything, right? Who, however, God, it's just, <laughs> it's incredible. But so just to give context, like those are some, those are the things that, that God says. Like he's, he refers, you know, Jesus is, I'm Lord. He refers to his father as the father. Um, so where did like the 200 other names come from? Where'd they come from? Say it loud. Yeah. I was just like, just people. <laughs> right. So that's, I kind of wanted to just touch on it a little bit. It's, it's, those names represent personal revelations of who God was to them in their journey of getting to know them, getting to know God. They are walking with the Lord, or they may have just obeyed God, even in their disbelief. God shows up. And in those times, they're like, I'm going to build an altar. This is awesome. My children will know about this. All of my, you know, descendants will know about this revelation of God. And it was based on an experience of knowing what God had done for them. Just a few examples. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. And that's from Abraham. He had called that place. The Lord will provide. And he says, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. And it's going back to when he was, you know, with his son. Um, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Uh, In context, that's when uh, it was when Moses, they had already crossed the Red Sea. They had already seen these incredible, terrible miracles. (laughs) They're terrifying things that God had done. And they saw... um, you know, they had already experienced the Red Sea. They also were raised in a place with many gods. So even though they were God's people, they would have had influence of other gods just by being around it, hearing about it. So when we want to judge their disbelief and them going back to their old, you know, bringing in old gods, like, I don't know if this one's working anymore. You know, we don't have water. So... Remember that bull God? Let's bring that one out again. We always had water. When we, you know, it sounds so crazy that they had experienced such miracles and still kept worshiping other gods, but we don't have the context that that's what they were. And some of us worship other gods too. Like we're like, God, I, you know, God's not working anymore. So I'm going to get to this, you know, I'm going to start smoking again. Um, it, those are the gods of today. God's not working, so I'm going to put this porn on. It always makes me feel good, or I'm stressed. Um, This God, I haven't seen him lately. I don't feel him, so I'm going to go solicit that prostitute, and then I'm going to end in shame. God's not working, so I'm going to gossip to someone else because the other person hurt my feelings. I'm going to act out. I'm going to look for the TV. The TV God's a big one. The computer God. (laughs) God of Google. (laughs) Whatever it is, we can't judge the Israelites, okay? So for context, they were, it's like if we were brought to a place and we're like, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like God's hearing me, whatever that other God is that we go to, that's what they did, right? Um, anyway, so with Jehovah Rapha, um, the Israelites had been freed from slavery. They saw the Red Sea, um, and this was before they found the fresh water. So they were struggling, um, but in that time, um, that's when Moses had a uh, meeting with God, and this is the outcome of it. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commandments and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So that's Jehovah Rapha. That's how he got that name, that nickname. Um, and then, um, I, I'm not going to go through everything cause it would take us like four days. Um, but, um, but the Lord is my banner, Jehovah Nisi. That was Moses. That was an, another experience with Moses Gideon. Um, we get Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Um, and one of my favorites, I say it wrong. So just don't judge me. Jehovah Ra, 
the Lord is our shepherd. How many of us still love to hear that intimate name that David calls the Lord? And we all know that that scripture, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. And that is a personal name, descriptive name that David calls his father through his experience and that, that, that signal of intimacy. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so it's important to know that, you know, God calls himself this. We take a journey of getting to know someone. We connect with them in a very personal way. And so when we're looking at our journey with God, it's not calling out, you know, calling out the names of God. There may be some names that are in the Bible that you have an experience with God yet. Doesn't mean you can't pray it or say, you know, God, this is who you are. I know that in faith. But when you do pray certain things and you have walked through it, if God has healed you and you say, because I saw some of you and I'm like, God, my healer, like, yes, that's my God. That's a Nick. That's a name I call out because I know he's healed me. You feel, or if you need healing, you're speaking it in faith. Like that's my father. And he, if I ask for bread, he's not going to give me a stone, you know? So we're, we're, it's a personal name of God. Um, so how we perceive God dictates how we receive God. Okay. Um, and that's how, you know, going back to my story with my father, like my dad, I, you know, we don't talk every day. Um, but whenever we do talk, it is deep. And there are times where I just need to call my dad. Um, but how I perceived him influenced how I received him. There were times he used to try to talk to me and I would just like, oh, that's my dad. Yeah. And <laughs> because I had my perception of him, but perceiving him as someone, he went from, once the truth came out, he went from someone who, I hate to say it this way, my mom, you know, dealt with, or just, we, he was there, you know, doing his part. He's supposed to work. He's supposed to give us what we need to being someone who chose me, who he went from being that guy to my defender, my protector, my champion. My father became that to me. So I receive my, my father, my earthly father, in a different way. And so that's where, where we are now. It's like some of us want to benefit from the title of Christian or, you know, but don't want the relationship. Or we think we have a relationship, but it's the same. It's like the relationship I had with my father before knowing truth and before knowing who he was. And if that's enough for you, that's fine. You know, do your thing. That's not enough for me. And it shouldn't be enough for you. And going back to that original context of why we're talking about this, it's not about the earthly things. It's about this. You know, it's about... We're here to worship God, to commune with God. To, and then, you know, there's so much we, I could go into, but it's like, what's our purpose? But to be with the Lord and to also share that with others. Um, so I ask you, what do you call your father? What do you call our father? I just want you to think about it. I wanted to ask you, how do you see him? And that's, you know, do you see him caring? Do you feel like God is caring? Do you see him as merciful? Or do we hide and cover ourselves in fear when we know his presence is here? How would you describe him? How would you describe our father, our heavenly father? And some, some of us here may feel like you're kind of going to the generic descriptions, like almost like listing off the names of God. But how would you, how would each of us describe our heavenly father? But how we get to know someone, and it's, I just wanted to kind of have us think about it. We get to know someone by spending quality time. So I just want to walk through, what does that look like? How can I get to, if you're sitting here and you're like, yeah, I was thinking those were 200 names of God. I didn't understand. I haven't had this personal revelation. I've been in church, but I have a shallow relationship. One way that we can get to know God, and it, it, we have to spend quality time with him. And what does that look like? Um, this can be through prayer. 
This can be through worship. But ways to spend uh, ways to spend time with God, prayer, worship, scripture, meditation, silence, and solitude. Some of us have too much going on, okay? Um, and, uh, and silence and solitude isn't just like, I'm going to be in silence and solitude and like putting music on, like real silence and solitude. And that's hard for us because we're always hearing something. And so it makes us uncomfortable. But silence and solitude is a good way, way to spend quality time. Um, study his history. Uh, reading the Bible. Not just the Bible app that shows the daily scripture. I'm talking about like really kind of digging deep into the word is a way to know who our father is. It helps us understand his character and recommend, it helps us recognize trends. Um, when you know someone's history, you also know whether they would do what someone's telling you they did or not. If someone says, your dad said this, I'll think about it. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like him, right? <laughs> sounds like something my dad would say. Um, but if someone says, well, your dad said this, and I know, he, like, he wouldn't say that. Tell me the whole story. What did you say? I'm going to start digging deep because I'm like, my dad wouldn't say that, you know? <laughs> and that's the same with our Heavenly Father. We need to know his history. We need to read the Bible. Another way to learn God's history is spending time with other Christians. Um, listen to their testimonies. Um, and serving in the church. You know, you get to know God because we're, we're made in his image, you know? So when we're spending time with other Christians and we also see what God has done in their lives, we get to learn, you know, who he is. Another way, um, is being honest and vulnerable. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be honest. Like I said, you know, when we need to be honest with God, um, and it's just, I go back to that garden. Like it's, we look at it and it seems silly, like, where are you going to go in the garden that God's not going to find you? You know, it's like Adam and Eve. We read it and it's like, that's so silly, <laughs> you know? And, but we do that. <laughs> we, we do something, we feel shameful and we think we can just like cover it up and like be like, okay, God, forgive me. And then we like avoid God, you know? <laughs> and so, um, being honest and vulnerable is a good way to get to know God too. And how do we do that? You know, hold yourself accountable and face the shadowy places with God. Apply scripture and journal as God, you know, walks you through those things that are so hard, you know, just journaling. Um, I love Psalm 1, 139, 1, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. We want to know God and we want God to know us. Um, so stop hiding. Um, and the, the last part of a way to know God, get to know God better. Um, if just, if you needed some of that to, to, to think about is to share God with others within everyday interactions, um, intentional service to others and evangelism in general. And you can say like, how do you get to know God that way? Um, when my parents became grandparents, I, I'm like, I don't know this part of you. <laughs> when I saw the way my mother loved my children, that was a different kind of experience for me. I saw a part of my parents come alive that I didn't know was there. Um, so when you get to reaching out to people and sharing the love of God and evangelizing. And it sounds like such a scary word. And some people think it's like a job, like I'm an evangelist or I'm not. No, when we share God with others, we get to know God. We get to know God in the way that he loves on them. And it's an incredible experience. I'm not a pastor, but it doesn't mean it's just my job because I'm in the field. Okay to reach the people. It's not only my job. There are so many people that I walk through while I'm in geriatrics, like walk through death with and losing loved ones. And it's such an opportunity to just love on people and share the love of God. And I often think like we're missing opportunities, you know, and I, you know, the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. We are the laborers. So evangelizing, sharing God with our interactions with others is a way to get to know God 
and you get to walk through it in such a, an incredible way. So, so that was um, the main ways to get to know God. But something starts to happen when we get to know God. We start to see how much we are like him. <laughs> because there's a transformation of the mind and we become more like him. And um, light always drives out darkness. So I just wanted to thank you for not walking out when I was like, you may not make it into heaven. That's my message. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to kind of leave you with those things. I will, you know, it's available if you wanted some of the notes or some of the application pieces. And I just encourage each of us, I would encourage each of us to just kind of think about those applications because many of us are comfortable with, if there are 12 disciplines, we, we may be comfortable with three, but like what pastor Brian was saying, it's not about the comfort. It's time to go back to, we're staying awake till five in the morning because we just want to talk. We just want to spend time with each other. And then I want to encourage you as, as God is moving and shaking things up here, Go to fa your father about it and allow God to bring clarity. These groups that are starting don't think they're not for you. What God's doing is for us so that even if you think you're there, like I promise you, you're not. None of us are. <laughs> but walking through it too, even if you're like, man, I know God, I feel good and confident. Walking through the group can help you understand how to help others walk through the process too. Okay.